Welcome back, everyone. We are ready to move on. What we learned in the last podcast was how we deal with something called an array. And uh, review that if you're not clear on arrays. But what we've done here is we've declared our sections array and I've given it some, some uh, content here. So it's an array consisting of a string called home. It's just the word home, the word products, the word about, and the word contact. Now what we're doing is we're running a loop on that. It says basically for each point in the array, and which array? Well, the sections array, because we could have multiple arrays. And take each uh, index of that array is a row and this is what we're going to do is define it as a variable called row and then that way we can echo out something based on the content. Now you can see here that we have loopable content. We have a pattern here going down here with this list and this is our navigation. We have the li and there's an href inside there and it changes based on home products about and context. So what I can say here for instance is I can say echo and then let's go ahead and in quotes we'll say li and then we will do the a tag. I'll come back to the href in just a second. Um, and let's go ahead and close that out. Let's start to build the simple and then we'll go from there. Okay, so remember for, uh, so for every point in this array, and there are four, I'm gonna have four LIs with four links in the middle. Now we need to fill out what these are. Oh, and the other thing I might wanna do is say, um, I'll show you a little PHP trick here. If you use backslash in, this just says create a new line in the HTML. So if you like to view source and you like it to be clean, you might want that. That'll just give it a line break is all that does. Okay, so let's save that. Okay, now we need to add some more data in here. We need to do the a href equals. Now be careful here because we're about to need a quote. If I use a single quote, PHP has a problem with this because it thinks I've terminated the array. Uh, excuse me, the array. It th thinks I've terminated the string. And see how when I only have one, it just funked everything out here? Uh, what I want to do is use the forward slash there too, the backslash, I can't remember which switch here, but if I use the forward slash quote, what this does is it says, hey, don't end the string. I need this to be part of the string. Okay, so it's going to put that quote in the string, which is what we want because ultimately we want it to spit this out just like it looks here into the HTML for this to work, obviously. So we're going to say ahref equals forward slash, and then let's go ahead and do two because we're going to need two quotes. And in between those, we're going to say index.php, and then what we're going to do is go ahead and say question mark page equals, and then what I can do is I can actually drop this variable in right here. Let's say row. Okay, and remember, it's not page, it's row. Okay, so what is row? Row is gonna be, for each one of these sections, it's going to be what that index is. So it's gonna be in the first instance, home, second index, in instance, products, third, about, and fourth, contact. Okay, so I can assert, insert that row in here. The other thing I need to do is you can see over here that it says, you know, we've got home, products, we have it in the, in the navigation. So I can go ahead and do that here too, just say row, okay? And that's it. That's all you got to do. Now, what we need to do here is we need to deal with the selected thing, okay? And we're going to run an if statement for that. Um, and I'll show you how to do that. What we're going to do here is let's put our cursor right here before the end of the A tag, the open A tag. And I'm just going to drop a line here. Let's drop a couple lines. Let's go up here and let's put a quote to terminate that string and put a semicolon. Now, let's go down here before this one. And we're going to say echo. And I'm just going to put a double quote there, okay? So what I've done is I've broken the string in two here, okay? And the reason I've done that is because I need to deal with that selected class in the middle. So right now, before I make this too confusing, you can see it's gonna echo this and then it's just gonna echo this right behind it. So if you didn't know any better, you wouldn't know anything because you'd just see it echo one line out. I've just split it in the middle. And I split it where we need to determine whether or not the class is the selected page and we need to set that, okay? All right, now let's back up for one second. You remember, from a couple podcasts ago. Um, let's go up to the index file here. The index file includes a variable called page. It's a dollar sign page, okay? And we've set that up. Now what's cool is we've included these documents inside. So we've included the header, we've included, depending on what that page is, a content page, and we've included the footer. Each one of these pages has access to that variable because we've brought them into the index documents, just grabbing that and bringing it out. So in the header, I can refer to that page variable and It'll know what I'm talking about if I've drawn it from index because it knows what that is. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to use an if statement. Okay, and what we're going to do is say if, and I have we're going to set a criteria, and then if if that's if that set of information is true, if the page is the page we're on, what I want to do is echo, and then we're going to echo a string. Okay, put a semicolon there, and that string is going to be class equals, and then again it's going to be selected. But I need quotes around it, right? So we need to put the quotes around it. 
and I also need to put, notice it's red, that means I've messed something up. We need to put backslash or forward slashes in front of those two quotes because those, you're telling it, hey, I'm not ending the string, but I need you to print this quote out into the HTML, okay? So if the page that we're on is the in, you know, if, if sorry, if the link that we're writing out is the page we're on, we're gonna echo selected. So what we're gonna see is this is really easy. Remember the two types of data that will allow one of these sections are row in this case, and their page up in the uh, the index document. So basically, all you have to say is if row equals page, sorry, we have to use two sets of equal signs, and let me explain that. If row equals page, then echo class equals selected. Okay, so the page variable we never see in this page. It's actually up in the index page, but we have access to that variable because this page is included up there. Okay, so think of it this way. It's actually going to see this in the index page because this is the page being included. So I hope I'm not making this too confusing. So if the row that we're dealing with right here is equal to the page. Now I used double equal sign, okay, because we're testing for equality. And there are different things you can do if you have, uh, if you're testing numbers. So if you're saying if you know, a certain variable of number is greater than five. You could say greater than or equal to, or what we need, we need the double equals for it for testing for equality, because the opposite of this is inequality. And I would take away one and we would use that exclamation point. So this is if row is not equal to page, but in this case we want to test for equality. So we need two of those. So anyway, so that's all we need to do. So if the row that we're on is equal to the variable of page, then just go ahead and add that class equals selected and that lets us know what page we're on. Now, if we've done everything right, and I hope we have, let's go back over to our document. If I click on home, oh, wait a minute. Notice that it doubled everything. This is a problem. Let me show you what happened because <laughs> we copied, we used this as a pattern. I don't need this anymore. So you're seeing that it's going to build that index and then, and then duplicate. So let's just delete all that down there. That's what we end up with and that's why I left it in there to show you. Now let's go over and reload. And you can see now when I click on content, contact, contact stays red, product stays red, home stays red, about stays red, because we are telling it, based on that variable, a bunch of things. We're telling it what content to go get, and PHP is doing that, and then PHP is also telling us to assign a class that's going to be equal to, to selected to that page as well, so then the style sheet knows which page we're on. So anyway, we're kind of crossing two languages here using PHP and CSS, but you can see now that that's what I've done. So I can tell the user, you know, that's what I want my, um, uh, you know, the page to be set to. I want that to be reflected in the style sheet. Uh, this is not a wonderful design right now by any stretch of the imagination, but I have room to grow on here. I can go in and add things to that. So anyway, that's what we've done in this series of podcasts. Is, you know, it was a lot of steps, but it's been very simple. All we've used is a variable. We learned how to build an array. We learned how to use the built-in include function in PHP. We never wrote our own functions for any of this, so it was easy. So variables, arrays, functions, and then we basically learned some statements. There was the if statement, so that's conditional. Um, if this is true, then do this. And then we also did the for each loop, which basically took us for each row in an array to do something with that row. So th that's you know about four steps that we learned there, but um, you know it's a little bit complicated, but this is what we end up with is a basic website that's real easy to change. If I wanna go add content to the, let's say the about page, if I wanna go in and write some content, we'll just drop in some Greek, let's go to about. And let's leave about as is, and then let's just drop in some Greek. So I'll pay, say, uh, you know, paragraph lorem ipsum here, let's save it. Now when I go into here, boy, it makes it easy to create these sections all of a sudden, because I don't have to rebuild the nav or copy anything. If I need to make a change in something, I only have to do it once, and it carries out throughout the website. So hope you can see where I'm going with this. So anyway, it's been the art of code, and uh, we'll move on to another topic next time.